The People's Democratic Party PDP governors have accused the All Progressive Congress APC of plotting to return Nigeria into a one-party state. And DSS accepts responsibility for the attack on Sunday Boho's house and declares him wanted. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Ann Ocon. The People's Democratic Party PDP governors have accused the All Progressive Congress APC of plotting to turn Nigeria into a one-party state. The governors expressed their determination to resist the alleged plot to foist a one-party state on the country. The governor spoke against the backdrop of Tuesday's defection of Zamfara State Governor Belo Matawale from the PDP to the APC. The ruling party has, however, denied all of this allegation. Also, the River State Governor, Nyesun Wiki, has criticized Matawali for betraying the PDP, saying the governors of the PDP risked their lives by traveling to appeal to Matawali not to leave the PDP. Well, joining us to discuss this is Kola Olobodion. He is the PDP Publicity Secretary. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Olobodion. Thank you very much. Good evening. Great. Um, so let's just cut straight to the chase. Your party had warned... Um, Governor Matawale, that if he dared to leave to the APC, he was going to lose his seat. Um, how exactly do you want that to happen? Because uh, he's obviously still the governor of Zamfara State. He's just changed the flag of his party. Well, the way it will happen is that the plan of the party is to file the staff and ask the Supreme Court to determine whether it is possible for a party that was not in an election to inherit a candidate or to inherit a governor that has been declared as being elected on another party that was in an election. So what we are taking to court is the validity of the decamping of Governor Bello Matawali into the All Progressives Congress which the Supreme Court declared that it did not participate in the 2019 election. Now, the chairman of your party um, recently, I think within the week, had described the defections of some of the party's governors as a plot to rig the 2023 elections um, by the ruling party. I, I mean, at what point does moving from party A to B translate to rigging? Uh, and I've, I've, I heard that interview that he granted. He spoke uh, while they were outside um, protesting. I'm trying to understand what is happening is that these people have moved to another party because maybe they have what they're looking for in your party, uh, in, in the APC. How does that translate to rigging elections in 2023? Well, when we say that the APC is planning to rig elections in 2023, we are saying that, in effect, that the, the APC is not campaigning. They just have nothing to campaign with. They cannot approach Nigeria. But it's not campaign season yet, Mr. 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 Logbodion. It's not campaign season yet, is it? They're not campaigning yet. 2023 what, what, is still what, far from now. What, what, we are saying, what we are saying, which you must understand, is that APC has achieved nothing in six years. And as such, they will have nothing to, come to, to meet with the people and say, these are the list of the achievements that we have made. All the promises of ensuring that the exchange rate will be one naira to one dollar. All the exchange rate, all the plans and promises that they made to Nigerians, that they will pay 5,000 naira to the agent across the federation. All these have become fake promises. And the position of the Republican Democratic Party is that knowing fully that the APC have nothing to say to the people in 2023. So what they do is to lobby, to buy, to intimidate, to coerce all our governors by using the instrumentality of coercion of the government against them. So and we are saying it clearly that they will have nothing to campaign with in 2023 except to rig elections. So in two months, you have lost two governors. 
One was, of course, the governor of Cross River State, Professor Ben Ayadi, and then uh, Governor Belo Matawali. Um, and you've also lost uh, certain members of the national and state assemblies. Um, aside from the accusations of rigging that you, your party has made, do you not feel that maybe you need to look within the party? Maybe you have cracks and maybe most of the people who are left your party seem to be uh, unhappy with how the party has been or treated them. I'll tell you what. Uh, the governor of Cross River State gave one of the reasons why he left the party for the APC, um, saying that the party structure in the state was not given to him, and he felt that as a governor of a state, he should be the leader of the party. Now, he's gotten that from the APC. Shouldn't this be a, a, you know, a wake-up call for the PDP to look within itself to find out what it is that it's doing that's making these governors, who are supposedly your soldiers, uh, to be leaving for the APC? That must truly really be a new song from the governor of Cross River, Ben Ayadi. He did say that he said he left the PDP because structure was not given to him. I believe absolutely that would be a new song. Because when he, at the point when he left the People's Democratic Party, Governor Ben Ayadi he said he holds the People's Democratic Party in great respect. He never said that the party offended him. But going back to the allegation that you have brought up, saying that he was denied structure. I will advise that as an investigative reporter, as an investigative journalist, you will need to go back to Cross River State to go and find out well, the verification here's of the, the, here, here's, here's the here's the here's the here's the news headline. I'm from that state. Can I've I, been there. I, I've been there. I was there for the past one month, so I'm not in any way giving you fake news. So as an investigative journalist, I, I'm letting you know that this is this is not news. Well, I'm telling you that the report was available on the headline when at the point in time when I had left the party. He said he holds the Blue Democratic Party in increased respect. And I'm also insisting that you will need to, to cross him to ascertain what happened in respect of the different structure. What we are aware of is that the Blue Democratic Party never denied the Mayadi of the structure. So uh, I'll ask again, was B Professor Ben Ayadi in charge of the party structure in Cross River State? Let's not forget, um, there's also been a recent, you know, scenario where uh, he and um, is a member of the House of Representatives were at loggerheads as to the fact that, um, you know, the governor tried to impose a person uh, into the seat of the Senate. That seat is still uh, in question, uh, where you had Ode take the seat, where you, uh, and Jaribe has been on, you know, the case with the courts, saying that he was the one that the party supported uh, to be the preferred candidate. But then, of course, Dr. Ode was the governor's candidate, which seems to be that the party is not necessarily banding behind the governor. Well, I don't agree with you because you, know, you do not have the part of the issues that you have. Please educate me. There was, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I give you a can I, can I, can I, can I will educate you. What happened was that there was a Congress in the party. And in that Congress, there was contestation for power. There were states that didn't have such contestation for power in which the governors of the state on their own were able to structure the party in their, in their own state. But what happened in the case of Cross River, as it concerned the Nairobi, was that due to the contestation, the other people on the other end were able to win the structure in an election of the party oversighted by INET in line with their rules. And at the end of the day, the party organized the Congress on the basis for the position you were talking about, that is for the Senate, the party organized the Congress on the basis of the list of the National Assembly, which the court said was binding. And they went into an election in the Congress. Yes, I had was in the party at that time, and I had side, won the election, won the election. And the other issues went to the court. Once issues go to court, the party becomes a combat. It depends on the outcome of the court decision. So I truly don't understand where the allegation is coming from that the party, and I'm sure the Nayade will never accuse the Democratic Party 
and I mean the structure of the party as having worked against him. They wouldn't say that. Okay. Let's move on to um, other issues in the PDP. Um, like I did ask uh, your deputy some days ago, uh, before the party started having governors and members of the National Assembly leave, um, we noticed that the uh, former Speaker of the House of Representatives, uh, former Senate President, I beg your pardon, um, had been going around the state to try to unite the party. So obviously it meant that the party did have problems and you were trying as much as possible to deal with it. But how well has that worked out? Because we still see people leaving the party. Even though Governor uh, Wike of River State has said that uh, no matter how many people leave, the party is well and strong enough for 2023. But in the case of Matawale, um, as we see, we did see you uh, as angry as you are right now in the case of Ben Ayade, but we're seeing the PDP over and over talking about the case of the Zamfara State Governor. Why does it hurt so much that the Zamfara State Governor has moved to the APC? You need to, you need to, you need to understand the circumstances that surround the emergence of Matawale as Governor of Zamfara State to be able to grasp what happened and how the People's Democratic Party is reacting this way. The People's Democratic Party has to react this way because we went to the court and in the court, the, 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 the Supreme Court ruled that the party that came second would be sworn, should be sworn in as a governor. And the Supreme Court also ruled that the APC was not in the election. So, so, so we find this strange that in part of the ruling of the Supreme Court, that Matawale would surreptitiously and Nicodemusly go around to now return the ticket to the party that was not in the election. So this is what we are challenging, and this is what we will take to the court. There's nothing wrong with testing the laws of our nation. It is not only within the confines of the parliament that laws are amended. We can go to court, and in the wisdom of the Lord Justice, they could say that, well, the APC was not in the election, the campaign into the APC was wrong, and they can also speak, they can also make pronouncements otherwise. But what is important to us as a democratic political party is that we will have censored the process so that in the future it will serve as a president. Okay, interesting. Now, the PDP, let's talk about the state of the nation for a second. Um, you and I live in this country and we're seeing all the things that are happening, banditry, the level of insecurity, the cost of living rising high, the Naira taking a deep dive. Uh, I mean, the, the list is endless. Um, a, a lot of people have wondered why um, the, AP, the PDP had been quiet for so long and then all of a sudden the PDP is waxing lyrical um, and some have even branded the PDP as opportunistic because they believe that the PDP has not played opposition politics as they should have compared to when the APC was on this side of the divide. Well, it is strange that anybody would describe the party as an opportunist. It's totally strange. And as a matter of fact, I cannot comprehend a situation in which any vote, whoever that person is in Nigeria, would describe the PDP as being opportunistic. There is no point in this country in which the party has not had a point on everything that had happened in the country in the last six years of President Muhammad Buhari. There was no point in which party members are not, were not speaking out. So what do you mean by, what, what would anybody mean by saying that PDP is just being opportunistic? How? When PDP was in government, the party was criticized. The government of President Bula Jonathan was criticized. As a matter of fact, the engagement that the APC did then bordered on brigandy. But what we are engaging in because we understand the nuances of this nation, and because we are concerned about the feeling of the ordinary Nigerian, and because we know the import of allowing the situation to go beyond, to go below normal. Because of that, we are engaging in constructive criticism of what the government is doing. 
So it is it will be totally strange for anybody to accuse People's Democratic Party of being opportunistic. Opportunistic over what? It's pretty really responsible for the mass of failure that APC and President Muhammad Buhari has become. It's the pretty really responsible for the pains and the anguish that Nigeria has been thrown into. So there's nothing been about being opportunistic, about being opportunistic in this. Let me talk, let's talk about the nomination of Loretta Onoche um, by Mr. President um, for uh, uh, the position of the um, INEC chairman. Uh, of course, that is an issue that has been kicked against by many, including your party. Um, why do you think that she is not the best person for the job? It is clear because the constitution provides that if you are a card-carrying member of the political party, you cannot be an umpire at the Independent National Electoral Commission. I will find this strange that Loretta Onoche, who is a card carrying member of the of the Resist Congress, who has been campaigning and wearing local of the APC, who is also a personal assistant of Mr. President, will be nominated as an umpire in which a good Democratic Party will contest the election. The basic question that I, that I will ask is that President Muhammad Buhari appoints Kola Alokmo Jr. as a commissioner in INEC. He will never do that. Just the same way, the People's Democratic Party has the responsibility to oppose the nomination of Lawrence Arnoche because he will be going to INEC to create confusion and to work towards the original plan of the APC in 2020. Let's look at the issue of insecurity now. I, I want us to face it squarely. Um, what is the, what, how impactful has the PDP and their governors and the members of, uh, of the National Assembly been in, in tackling the government, um, in pointing the government in the direction that it should be going in dealing with this issue? Let's not forget that um, in, in the issues of banditry and kidnapping, it seems to be a free for all these days. People are being kidnapped on a daily basis. Um, the president is still talking about open grazing, even though 17 state governors had decided that, you know, they would put a ban on open grazing. Um, of course, let's talk about what's happening uh, in the southeast, especially in Imo state. And of course, a, a couple of other states around there where police um, or police stations are being targeted. Um, INEC offices are being burned. Um, what has been the PDP's reaction on that? And of course, what's the party doing to also um, dissuade people from, you know, carrying out these dastardly acts? For all the People's Democratic Party, our position is that we believe in true federalism. And we believe that the, solu the direct solution to the uh, uh, menaces uh, that, that are confronting Nigeria today lies in true federalism. Because that will enable each state to decide what it wants. It will enable the each state to determine whether they want to go for open grazing or they will go for ranching. It will also help the, state, the, the various states to know whether they are satisfied with the presence of the federal police or they will need a, a, a state police or contemporary police for the community. So we believe that what the federal government needs to do, particularly the Buhari administration, is to allow for true federalism. Can I ask? And this that the position we have I... condemned and condemned and condemned atrocities across the nation. We have preached to Nigerians on the need for us to live our mother state and on the need for us to live together. We have also told the federal government that technology will be a faster way out of our situation in the country. We have advised the federal government, particularly the President Muhammad Buhari administration, to engage in our borders and make sure that they create the command structure of all military and engage at the border and don't leave the border open and for us the way it is. But Mr. President will not listen to the advice of the People's Democratic Party. Mr. Lobodian, because uh, it is coming from let me ask a question. The PDP has ruled this country for 16 years. 
and all of these recommendations that you're making, and I'm not in any way, you know, um, but I want to play the devil's advocate, obviously. Um, you, all of these recommendations of restructuring, of true federalism, of using technologies and border controls, how did the PDP put these things in place? And I'm asking, if the PDP had done these things, would we be having to tell the government of Buhari to do these things? You solve a problem when it arises. If we do not have the kind of division in the country as we have today under the People's Democratic Party, there will be no need, there will have no need to create solutions. So, as we speak, until the People's Democratic Party left power in 2015, the country was more stable and more united than what we have today. So you could not have been holding us responsible for not creating a proper solution. The problem that didn't exist. But all the things that we're seeing happening today are, are, are types and shadows of what had started under the PDP administration, whether we like it or not. It may not, be ha it may, may not have been as loud and clear as we're seeing it today. But if the PDP had such insight, why didn't you lay the ground rules for this kind of things not to happen? <laughs> Instead of waiting <laughs> for it to become a full-blown problem again, I'm not in any way holding brief for the APC government, but I'm asking, you have been there for 16 years. You could have fixed some of these problems that have become a big monster today. It is very, it is very, it is very, very unfortunate the way we as Nigerians forget our SDG. We talk about Nigeria not finding solutions. It is the PDP government not fight insurgency to the fringes of the Northeast, is really not to that. So why are, we, why, are we, why are we pretending about our yesterday? The truth of the matter is that the Buhari administration has mismanaged the security situation. And that is why wherever you turn in Nigeria today, you have all forms of insecurity. So you cannot come and hold us responsible as a party. If there are no issues, if there are no problems, Yes, there was issue of Boko Haram before the PDP left office. But I am telling you, and it's on record, that before President Kula Jonathan left office, insurgency had been fought to the fringes of the North East. Insurgency was not a problem of the Northwest, it was not a problem of the North Central, it was not a problem anywhere in the South. Okay. But what, what, what do we find today? So you cannot say that the New Democratic Party really created a grand norm, really created the rules. Really solve the problem when he had no such problem. And at the time that the Blue Democratic Party left office in May 20, in May 29, 2015, was there anywhere where Bomb was fighting? So well, these kind of people who came together under the auspices of a political party to hijack power and had no 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 meaning as to what they wanted to deploy that power to, had no plan, had no focus, and have thrown the country into a mess. So you cannot hold people responsible for okay. All right. for me. Well, we want to thank you. Kala Lobodinho is the National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you so much for being part of this conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us at Still Plus Politics. When we return from this break, Sunday Igboho is being declared wanted by the DSS. We'll talk after this break.